a direct descendant of the first ever attack helicopter, the AH-1 Cobra. The Bell AH-1Z Viper is the result of the evolution of top American rotary aircraft. Also known as Zulu Cobra for its variant letter, the aircraft's elite DNA dates back to the 1960s. However, it wouldn't be until three decades later that the U.S. government made sure the Viper would enter the new millennium with mighty force. The Viper features the best qualities of the Huey and Cobra in one sleek design. However, unlike other Bell helicopters, the Zulu Cobra proved a bold enterprise, changing the company's signature two-bladed main rotor for a four-bladed one that allowed for outstanding flying and combat capabilities. Implementing state-of-the-art weapons and digital technology, the Viper was not only able to respond to the demand of the contemporary battlefield, but effectively became the most advanced helicopter to this day. Origins A U.S. Army contract issued in the early 1950s called for a medical evacuation helicopter that eventually branched into the first Navy and Marine Corps Iroquois variant, or Huey, which first flew in 1956. Thousands of Huey and Cobra helicopters from the H-1 family were built from then on, but it wouldn't be until 1979 that the Bell AH-1Z Viper saw its origins. Its Cold War-era predecessor, the Bell AH-1 Cobra Experimental Model 249, was practically an AH-1S, but equipped with the Bell 412 Huey's four-blade main rotor. Notably, the model participated in the 1980 Farnborough Air Show and successfully showcased the Cobra II's design. This helicopter was to be armed with Hellfire missiles and fitted with a new targeting system and improved engines. The helicopter drew a lot of interest and attention, especially from the U.S. Marine Corps, but the required funding was not available. Nevertheless, the upgraded AH-1W Super Cobra would enter service with the Marines in 1985 with immediate success. And in 1993, the company submitted a version of this model for the United Kingdom's new attack helicopter program. The resulting derivative, the Cobra Venom, had a modern digital cockpit and armed wire-guided missiles, but the design was altered in 1995 and fitted with a four-blade rotor. Still, the Boeing AH-64D was selected instead. H-1 Upgrade Program The following year, in 1996, the Marine Corps launched an upgrade program called H-1, which was a joint venture with Bell Helicopter, to remanufacture their 180 AH-1W helicopters into AH-1Z Vipers, and another 100 UH-1Ns into UH-1Y Venoms, giving them an advanced four-bladed configuration that would keep them operational beyond 2020. Consequently, both the Viper and the Venom gunships were developed under the same program. The project's objective was to build fully modernized attack and utility helicopters, but equally important was a desired commonality of designs to reduce operational costs. In fact, both models shared a tail boom configuration, engines, rotor system, drivetrain, avionics architecture, software, controls, and displays, amounting to over 84% identical components. An upgraded cockpit configuration enabled smooth co-pilot access to the Night Targeting System, or NTS, which featured innovative zero-time airframes comprising state-of-the-art technology. Moreover, the original two-bladed semi-rigid rotor system was discarded. In its place, the model was fitted with a four-bladed hingeless bearingless system that allowed for an increase in flight envelope, maximum speed, vertical rate of climb, payload, and rotor vibration level. Progress was slow during the early stages of research and development, but when the AH-1Z Viper, also known as the Zulu Cobra in reference to its variant letter, flew for the first time in December of 2000, the potential of the new attack aircraft was fully realized. The Viper Bell delivered three prototype aircraft to the Navy's Naval Air Systems Command at Naval Air Station Patuxent River in the summer of 2002, setting off the flight test phase. A little over a year later, in October of 2003, the model entered low-rate initial production, with deliveries expected to extend for 15 years. Five AH-1W helicopters were remanufactured to standard AH-1Zs, and testing continued at NAS Protection River in Maryland. By 2005, the helicopter moved into sea trials, and the first shipboard landing on the USS Bataan amphibious assault ship was completed in May. 
the development phase was closed in early 2006, giving way to operational evaluation that summer. And not a year later, the first production AH-1Z Viper was delivered to the Marine Corps. At 58 feet 3 inches long, 14 feet 4 inches high, with a rotor diameter of 48 feet and a maximum takeoff weight that reached 18,500 pounds, the helicopter soon found its place among the best rotor aircraft in the world. Its two turboshaft engines provided 3,380 horsepower, allowing the Viper to take off and climb at more than 4.1 meters per second on a single engine in standard conditions and an air-to-air ordnance load. The Zulu Cobra's rate of climb was 8.2 meters per second, while its top speed reached 388 kilometers per hour. Also, its range extended to 648 kilometers, and its service ceiling rose to 3,720 meters. And in terms of maximum endurance, the helicopter could operate for three and a half hours. Its fuselage, as well as several other elements, were made of corrosion-resistant materials, and no two dissimilar metals in the whole structure were in contact. Besides, the airframe featured an epoxy primer layer on every exposed surface. Change of plans. By February of 2008, Phase 2 of the Operational Evaluation, or OP-EVAL, began. But that same month, the Marines decided on new builds rather than repurposed helicopters. As such, the U.S. Navy awarded Bell a contract to build 40 Vipers from scratch, and in September, 46 additional airframes were ordered, bringing the requested total to 226. OP-EVAL continued until October of 2010. The next month, the model was approved for full-rate production, and by February, the most advanced attack helicopter in the world attained operating capability. By then, the Marine Corps had already ordered an additional 189 Vipers, including 58 new airframes. Expected to provide rotary wing close air support, anti-armor, anti-air, armed escort, armed visual reconnaissance, and fire support coordination capabilities under day and night and in adverse weather conditions, the Viper would cement its place as the modern version of the AH-1 Cobra, the first ever attack helicopter. Leading Edge Going back to the original Cobra of the 1960s, the Viper has undergone constant improvements that eventually turned it into the most advanced helicopter in the world. Among its many upgrades, the Zulu Cobra was fitted with several state-of-the-art weapons as well as digital technology to respond to the urgent demands of contemporary warfare. The helicopter's integrated avionics were custom-made by Northrop Grumman, including two mission computers and an automatic flight control system with a four-axis stability control augmentation system. Remarkably, the cockpit includes Thales Avionics Top Owl helmet-mounted displays with integrated fourth-generation image intensifier and forward-looking infrared capability. It also provides transition from day to night through a single button. The Viper's armament includes both tow and Hellfire anti-armor missiles. Besides, it qualifies to carry the Maverick missile, and its Raytheon tow missiles can reach targets at more than three kilometers on semi-automatic command-to-line-of-sight guidance. On the other hand, the Lockheed Martin Hellfires have a semi-active laser seeker and a range of no less than seven kilometers. In addition, the helicopter has fire-and-forget capability when in cooperative mode with laser target illumination. Notably, the AH-1Z was the first attack helicopter to qualify both the Sidewinder air-to-air and the Sidearm anti-radiation missiles. And what's more, it can fire the Hydra family of unguided 70mm rockets or even the 127mm Zuni rocket bombs. Also, starting in 2008, all units have been armed with APKWS. The helicopter is able to engage targets at close range with a three-barrel 20mm Gatling gun, and it also includes 750 rounds of ammunition. However, with the gun at a fixed forward position, the pilot has to aim by maneuvering the entire aircraft, a task made easier by the helmet-mounted sights. Targeting was provided by the NTS, integrating a forward-looking infrared, or FLIR, that automatically tracks targets with a laser designator rangefinder and a video recorder. However, Lockheed Martin replaced the system with a longer-range ANAAQ-30 target sight system, or TSS. This system includes a third-generation four-field-of-view FLIR, and the company had delivered over 100 units by 2017, with production and sustainment expected to continue through 2026. 
upgrades for the future. A 2001 joint venture between Lockheed and Northrop called Longbow International developed the Cobra radar system, in which the pod-based radar can be mounted on a wingtip or in a stored position and can automatically search, detect, classify, and prioritize targets, whether moving or stationary. The new electronic warfare suite features a new radar warner, the ANAPR-39, but current operational Navy helicopters will receive an update from Northrop. That APR 390V2 radar warning receiver, or RWR, will increase situational awareness through interactive management of the helicopter's countermeasures and sensors. In addition, Vipers are also equipped with ANALE 39 chaff and infrared flare dispenser, and they have been fitted with new rotor technology, avionics, and electronic systems in an integrated platform that improves survivability. Moreover, they can now find targets at longer ranges and attack with precision weapons. Impressively, its bearingless, hingeless rotor system has 75% fewer parts than other four-bladed articulated systems. Made of composites, the blades have increased ballistic resistance and a semi-automatic folding system for storage aboard amphibious assault ships. The Viper has attracted plenty of international attention, including from Pakistan, Poland, and the Philippines. And as of the 2020s, several countries have ordered a fleet of Vipers, including the Czech Republic and Bahrain. All in all, no less than 1,271 Cobras have been built, including 229 of the most advanced helicopter of this era, the mighty Viper. Thank you for watching our video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels. Also, turn on your notifications and stay tuned for more.